Three, and this is Sunday Morning Live with John M. and our very special guest, Tracy Newman. And this is our host, John M. Good morning, everybody, and happy Memorial Day weekend to you. It is, it is Memorial Day, and that means um, the Indianapolis 500 race is being run as we speak. And it means the uh, Kerrville Folk Festival, where I've been many times and love it there, is now underway. And, um, of course, it's also Sunday, which means we have Sunday Morning Live. And probably most of all, it's a time to reverently remember those who have served. And um, I am prepared. I'm going to introduce you to uh, Tracy Newman in just a moment. But first, um, this is uh, a song from my Songs I Wish I'd Written CD. I think it's appropriate for today. I left school, I was just 15, took a job cutting trees. The lumber mill was new in town. We couldn't turn the money down We cut them down We never stop Leave the waste Let it rot Another day Another round Pick up your axe Cut them down, the trees are gone, the mill closed down, the army came to our town, we might ticket out of poverty, they shoot me off overseas. Cut them down. We never stop. Leave the waste. Let it rot. Another day. Another round. Pick up your gun. Cut them down. Lost my leg, lost my mind. I left the ones I loved behind. And I applied for some relief. The VA man, why well, he said to me, You see, we cut him down. Never stop, leave the waste, let it rot, another day, another round, pick up your pen, cut them down, they count the men, just like the trees. Money is made from each of these. Beware the boss, the government. The trees are gone. The people spent. We cut them down. We never stop. Just let it rot Another day Another round Pick up your pen Cut them down Pick up your gun Cut 
cut them down Pick up your axe Cut them down There you go. <laughs> I knew you were going to ask me that. Stand by one quick moment. <laughs> oh, God. John is looking up the writer of that song. Yeah, we need the writer of that song. I'm Say. Tracy Newman. Hi. <laughs> Eric Balky and Jonathan Bird. I don't know them, do you? That's a co-write between the two of them. And as a matter of fact, I heard Eric do that song exactly that way. Um, I bet at the curve exactly that way. It, well, it was pretty close. Yeah. He, he did it solo like that, and he did the first verse a cappella at the Kerrville Folk Festival. Uh -huh. And at the time, I was looking for, I had most of the songs that I wanted to record on my um, Songs I Wish I'd Written CD, um, but I wanted a couple of songs, but, you know, I'd, I'd had songs by famous people like Jethro Tull and Paul Simon, and, mm -hmm. you know, and, but I wanted a couple of songs by lesser known artists that I still thought were of that caliber, and I heard him do that song. I thought, man, I got to record that. Yeah, that's a great one. And um, and uh, it's it's more heard. produced on the on the record. There's Lisa Nemzo sings a background uh -huh. vocal on it, and and uh, Kevin Longden does some really sweet guitar work on it. It's really nice. But this isn't about me. It's about you. Yeah, so I, so I, hi, I Tracy. The, hi. <laughs> <laughs> I just love the the thing of songs I wish I'd written, and now I I may have to do songs I wish I'd written, uh, part two by Tracy Newman though. Oh, ah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> however, however whole we do, I don't know how to write that, but you know, to, to do uh, songs I wish I'd written is a great idea. Well, if I if I did that, my first choice, and because I was just thinking about what would I do, yeah. the first choice would be uh, Richard Thompson's "Dimming of the Day." Oh, fantastic song! I, I was trying to write one of those yeah. about because I had just recently, this was a long time ago, I had written broken up with somebody, and I was thinking about how hard that time of day was. Yeah, you know when the evening was beginning, but the day was still there, and I started working on it and gathering information and writing down notes yeah. and stuff. And somebody played Dimming of the Day for me, and I thought, well, I'm not sure I need to do this. <laughs> oh, no, you would, you would, you would, really, do, you'd, you would be great on that. And, it, and if say, you want though. somebody to sing it with you, okay. I, I'm, I'm down. Yeah, but, but you know um, what I mean. That, oh, that, yeah. is, that just ripped me up. That's a great one to look at. If you don't it, know that song, look that up. Richard Thompson. I've got a Richard Thompson song on, on my cover album. Which one I, is uh, it? Gypsy Love Songs. I'm not sure I know yeah. that. Uh, uh, you know what? I do know that one. How does that... Um, don't sing me, don't sing me, yeah. don't sing me no more gypsy love yeah, yeah, yeah. songs. Oh, he's amazing. You know, but, so, you are Tracy Newman, you, you are, uh, at, you and I were both up late last night uh, yeah. at, at a wonderful house concert featuring Wendy yeah. Waldman and, and, John and our mutual friend John, John Zipperer's house. At, yes. Julie's Joint. And, yeah, Julie's Joint with, with uh, great music and great food. and uh, More performers in the audience than on stage. <laughs> yes, as always. <laughs> and, um, and yet we both managed to get up and, and make it here this morning. Well, it was morning, harder so. for me because I live uh, on the other side of the hill. Oh man! Yeah. Well, well. Kudos to you yeah. then for getting up at seven you know, these days. I don't know why. It's okay to get up at seven, but to actually get up and have, have to, to do uh, something, <laughs> you know, be somewhere and be yeah. dressed. <laughs> yeah. Well, and knowing you're going to be on video. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for for coming in and doing oh, this. Oh, my pleasure. It's, it's a lot of fun. So, so you have you you have a very diverse and, and varied career you you're you're you know television I'm so tired from it yeah <laughs> well but it's great though i mean you're you're very blessed and you know you you, you know yeah. a lot of a lot of successes in writing for tv and uh and also in songwriting and music and um um recording and and acting and and you you were one of the founding members of uh the Groundlings, uh, the Groundlings mm -hmm. uh, Improv Theater, where, and I understand you you taught and acted and directed there all three. Well, you know uh, what I and, what happened to me at the Groundlings was I discovered pretty quickly that my level of ability as a I was a good performer, but I wasn't. I didn't do characters. I wasn't that funny. I was funny in a certain way, but not in the way that the Groundlings are funny. But that I understood what they were doing well enough at that time, anyway, to to teach, because teaching at the Groundlings really means um, creating an environment 
-hmm. and I kind of understood what was holding me back and I, I understood how to sort of help people get over that mm -hmm. you know and my sister Lorraine was uh, one of the people there at the very beginning and mm -hmm. and when she was discovered um, for the first SNL uh, you know we realized oh my this is like a farm company mm. you know and it became yeah. it literally did it is the farm company for SNL now I mean, yeah. because everybody, I mean, Melissa McCarthy's from there, and uh, what's his name, Will, uh, Will Ferrell, mm -hmm. and uh, Kristen Wiig, and I mean, everybody, everybody in comedy that you love now, mm -hmm. pretty much is from the Groundlings. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it I mean, It seems to me that, that, I mean, yes, if you're going to do comedy, you have to be funny, but, but comedy per se, a comedy scene, a comedy piece very often benefits from from having elements that are not so funny yeah. um you, well, know, you know because the, you need the, the contrast premise, the you need the yin and yang and, real. And, yeah you know uh, uh, the uh, thing the thing about the groundlings uh not just the groundlings but other improv companies that's really amazing is that what it produces is not just the performers it really does produce writers because mm -hmm. i i kid around about it being a farm company for snl but what it really is is uh, what sh what comedy and show business is these days is almost all groundlings writing. I mean, if you looked at the roster, you know, the writers on mm. every show and every movie, you'll see that there's at least one groundling or former groundling in there because that's what you learn there. So, are you are you still doing any television writing now, or no, is it strictly music now? Uh, uh, my partner uh, John Stark. Uh, is it was his name? I mean, he's still alive, but we're not partners anymore. <laughs> but we uh, we created, according to Jim, mm. the, the, with Jim Belushi in um, 2001, and uh, we syndicated in 2003, and that's when I left because I had I had been writing for TV for about 20 years, so I just thought that's enough. Yeah. That's enough time. And I, uh, you know, I had was a singer songwriter before TV. Mm -hmm. But um, you can't really have that career and be a singer-songwriter professionally or full-time, obviously. So I just went back to writing songs. The, literally, the minute I walked out of the TV studio, I went to Nashville, you know, for mm -hmm. a weekend, one of those seminars, and I started writing right. immediately. And, by the way, John, writing for TV is a great way to learn how to write songs. Mm -hmm. Even though I was writing songs before TV... What I hadn't been able to do was tell a story in four minutes, mm -hmm. three minutes, four minutes. And when you have to write a story in 21 minutes and include a lot of dialogue and characters and everything, you really, really learn how to economize and how to mm -hmm. hopefully tell a story, have it be funny and emotional at the same time. Yeah. And that was, uh, you know, my first, one of my first songs was Waffle Boy. I don't know if you know that song. I'm not going to do it here. It's six minutes long, five minutes, something. But it it it's like a true sort of true story, and it's you know um, detailed and funny and very it's got a very emotional ending and funny. So you know that was like quite an accomplishment for me. I was really really proud of that. But I if I if I hadn't been in the Groundlings, I don't think I would have been able to do that. So yeah. I guess I'm telling all songwriters out there to join the Groundlings and go to the classes. And well, <laughs> I, I have always thought that. Uh, it's actually interesting to me that you're saying this with regard to writing, because I've always thought in terms of performance that that singing and acting are very, they're almost the same thing as far as yeah, I'm concerned. Well, performing and, is and, just the same thing. And, and yeah, and, uh, and so you're saying writing, you know, writing for TV, writing for music, it, it's, and I certainly agree. I mean, the biggest challenge, I think, in songwriting is condensing, you know, tell a whole story in, in three minutes and have it have have some impact, you know. You know, watching um, Wendy Waldman last night, um, I, I was struck by. It's a dilemma that I go through all the time as a performer. I'm I have a lot of songs that aren't funny, and that don't necessarily have a big you know, uh, you know, aha moment in them and stuff mm -hmm. like that. I tend to not perform them. You know, when people come see me, they hear "Fire Up the Weed" and. Uh, the carpool song and um, something like I just see you stuff that's 
you know, um, more geared toward... One of my favorites, by the way, I just see you. Oh, thank you. Beautiful song. But, but, you know, it's very geared toward performing. Yeah. You kind of know the response you're probably going to get. Mm -hmm. And whereas I have a lot of songs that, that are uh, come from, you know, that mysterious place where you're not really writing to say anything. You're just, just uh -huh. kind of saying what's come out of you and... And I tend to not perform them, and I'm and I listen to Wendy Waldman, and I realize that, and not just her. I, I mean, I hear this with other people. I it takes a lot of guts to get up there and not be a performer. Yeah. Not be up there to please or yeah. get laughs or, you know, I just uh -huh. have never really had the the guts to do it, you know. But I think in this next incarnation, over these next couple of years, I'm going to be performing some of those things that people don't know that I write. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. How do you, when, when you write, do you, um, like you do have some funny songs and you have some serious songs and some poignant songs and, you know, different kinds of things. Do you, um, do you ever like sit down and, and say, you know, today I'm going to write a funny song. No. Or, or, <laughs> or you just, whatever you're feeling at the moment or, or uh, uh, I, you know. I have never sat down and said I was going to write a funny song. I have always been very surprised that any of my songs turned out funny. That's the truth. Uh -huh. Like even uh, Fire Up the Weed, I realized that the content of that, you would say, oh, well, how did you? How would you think that that wouldn't be funny? You know, just the title right. it, it suggests something amusing, you know. But it's such a sad, tragic love story yeah. to me. And the fact that I, when I first, I was afraid to sing that on stage. And when I first sang it and started getting laughs, I thought, well, oh, this is like a big surprise to me. And yeah. I'm actually accomplishing saying what I wanted to say. And it's also funny, pretty cool, you know, yeah. Yeah. but, um, no, I, I, I very rarely sit down and say, oh, you know, I'd like to talk about this. You know, it's mm -hmm. just sort of sitting, you play a riff or something, and then yeah. it suggests a word, and then you realize, oh, this really could be a song, you know. You get a phrase sometimes? Sometimes like, I just get know. a phrase and yeah. keep doing it. Um, I mean, I have an assistant some days during the week, mm -hmm. and I am embarrassed when I'm, like, trying to write something that there's another person in the house because oh, I can't of the amount that. of I gotta times... Be alone. The amount of times I go over a phrase... The repetition mm -hmm. has got to be deadly to anybody listening. I, I was like, and I know that uh, Jackson Brown is like that. I re remember reading something. But she's just went through the same thing over and over and over and over. The same, literally the yeah. same thing over and over again. Almost like you're waiting for to see where it's going to go next. And there, how do you even almost. allow it to that's, go anywhere next? Yeah. I mean, you don't, you know. It's I do, like, I do exactly the same thing. I, I'll repeat something, you know, a hundred times and, and, well, I know one of those times it's going to just naturally lead and take go somewhere, somewhere else. else. And I have that almost. same inhibition. <laughs> I even, when I'm here with Hillary, forget write. I mean, if I'm writing, I have to be alone. But but even when I'm just, if I'm just, if I'm just practicing or, or you know, just sitting here playing songs, if, uh, you know, this morning I was going over a song that I haven't played in a while. And I, I feel like I have to, you know, I played the song and it, I felt like it was a little weak. And I said, I'm going to have to do that one again. And, you know, so <laughs> she had to hear it twice, <laughs> you know, and I may not even play it this morning. But, but, but uh, no, you what's know, what's so funny about that, though, is that, you know, you're aware that she's there. So you're performing. You don't even think about it, but you're performing. Oh, of course. You know, and, and the, she always tells me, oh, no, it's fine. Go ahead. You know, well, well but, she's not. Most of the time, <laughs> the other person there, my assistant is certainly not listening. First yeah. of all, I don't think she can hear me. Mm -hmm. You know, even though she's in the next room, she's got earphones in oh, usually. Yeah, yeah. But to me, it's like, uh, oh, wait till she hears this. Thing. I mean, there's this little thing yeah. in the back of me. Oh, I'm going to play this because she's here. You know, and she's not, she doesn't yeah. hear it. But but it's such a subtle thing, and I, I, uh, I find that when she's there, I don't, I really don't write. That's not good. <laughs> well, let's. We've been talking a lot about your writing. Let's hear something. You're well, right. do you have, it's, you know, I, I didn't really know what this was going to be like, so do you have anything besides I Just See You? Um, no, that's it. That's the only song I want to hear. No, right. just well, kidding. Well, actually, <laughs> I can do no, that. No, no, I was, I really was kidding. I, I love that something. song, but anything you want, anything you feel like. Do you want to talk about the baby behind you? Oh. I was going to ask about that. I was going to let her play yeah, a song first. That's my grandson, and this, of course, is my beautiful daughter. 
Charlotte and um, oh god well anyway yeah let me do that song let's see how does that go this is my newest song actually which by the way I, I worked it out I wrote, wrote it in Harriet Shock's class ah. because um, periodically I go through times where I'm not writing and for me, even though I know Harriet's method to jumpstart it, it's great to be in that group and to get her guidance. And because uh, I hadn't written a song in a long time, except for children's songs. I'm doing children's albums right now. So, uh, you know, when you have a, a muse like this, can you mm -hmm. even see him? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I hope I remember this title. <laughs> This is gonna happen. It's okay. Anymore. It happens to me too. <laughs> Here I am, a grandma. Da, da, da. Oh, this, the years flew by so fast. Yeah, my baby just had a baby. Cause God saves some good stuff for last. Uh, there are other proud grandmas out there. So I don't want to offend or compare. But my baby's baby is the very best baby in the whole wide world. My baby's baby is the very best baby in the whole wide world. Living this long is not a piece of cake. It's always oh my back I can barely climb upstairs without risking a heart attack then I hold my baby's baby and suddenly I'm strong I turn into super nana I can carry him all day long what is it in this little everybody. <laughs> My baby's baby is the very best baby in the whole wide world. My baby's baby is the very best baby in the whole wide world. This chunky little baby boy, his heart is filled with so much joy. His happy face shines like the sun he showers love on everyone I think I'm going overboard this is like too much isn't it <laughs> oh give me a break I may not be around to see my baby's baby grow up I'm lavishing a lifetime of praise on my puppy's pup he smiles when he sees me, he reaches up his little arms, there's not a single human being immune to this boy's charms. If we put all our kids' kids on display, even all you new grandmas will say, Tracy's baby's baby. Look at him. I mean, come on. <laughs> My 
Lots of hearts on that one. <laughs> you, when you see it later, you'll oh, see really? all the You're hearts. Oh, really? You're kidding. I kept no. thinking, oh, my God, this is so embarrassing. It's like so overboard. No, we got so <laughs> many songwriters watching, too. <laughs> Bill Berry, Tom hey, Bill. Kell. Oh, my God. Hi, guys. Jimmy Hi, Tom. Hunter. Tom was a good... Actually, both Bill Berry and Tom Kell were both guests here. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, tons of people. Penny Barnett. Yes. Heart, lots of hearts. Yeah, who's that? Penny Barnett. Oh, yeah. No, I know who she is. But what did you say after that? Heart? Lots of hearts. Oh, lots of hearts. That's how you said heart, people, rock, a heart. People like and something and hearts go flying. Yeah, yeah. The That's so cool. Yeah. Tons of people watching. You have to watch when we get off and oh, you'll see God. all the comments. and the. Oh, I love it. Yeah, I love it. Like I can't it. believe I made it through that, though, especially starting out screwing up like that. So Ken Krupnik asked if you could sing the song about dropping your daughter off at school. Oh, my. Talk about words. Uh, right now? Well, I mean, if you, yeah, want, sure, if you want to. I mean, if you can. Hey, Ken. Hey, Ken. Ken, uh, Ken was at the house I know, concert I last night, too. He sat right behind me, at least for a while, and then he sat next to and me. And he played in the song circle, too, last night. Oh, right. yeah? Nice job, Ken. What did he play? Oh, now you're putting me on the spot. I'm... Ken, what did you play? <laughs> Maybe he'll respond. Okay. We want to know the song you played last night, Ken. That's okay. It'll take him a second to type it in. You, you I'm, I was going to say that uh, this this carpool song, which is about this girl, except when she was you know 16, which is a long time ago. Uh, I just wanted to give you an idea of the kind of teenager I was, because this is this is an indictment of my daughter. <laughs> this next song, and so I just want to say that I was I was very aware. I'm very aware of the fact that I was a wretched teenager, and <laughs> my mother was. Uh, talking to me once when I was 16 in the kitchen she was talking about this new job she had and she was so excited and passionate about it and I remember sitting there thinking why is she telling me this she's her life is almost over you know and she was 36 wow so, Ken, wow that old huh <laughs> yeah, yeah Ken, but, but I mean that's what a teenager is like Ken's song was called look down on me is that like to God I think it's new I think it's a new song. Oh. You mentioned that was song. Uh, and I don't know what it's about because I wasn't there. I left. Okay, well, so I'm, I'm going to do as much of this as I can remember. It's been a while, but. Another one from Harriet's class. Actually, this is real because it's hard to use. I hate this school. It's a 40 minute drive. Why couldn't she go to the school nearby? I'm starving, why didn't I bring something to eat? Why did I wear shorts? I'm sticking to the seat. There's the volunteer security guard. She's gonna make all of us move our cars. Why did I ever have a child? Life was so much easier pre-Charlotte I had no idea how good I had it I'd see a baby and think that's what I need someone to love who depends on me oh yeah it's all coming back Here she comes, my little bundle of love in a hoodie and jeans. She's walking on her cuffs, her long blonde hair is in a mess of cornrows. She's rapping a verse about gangsters and hoes. She settles in, I ask, how was school? She glares at me, cause I'm so not cool. How did I ever get this child? making her so mean then I remember the way I was at 16 she's treating me like I treated my mama I'm getting my share of overdue karma oh yeah it's all coming back to me now if you're gone break away you need to turn around and bite the hand that feeds you be careful 
prisoner of love they knock you out they fill up your heart they're your everything your shining stars you risk your life to protect them and then they mark up their skin with something permanent whatever happened to my child why do i keep on suffering this carpool even though i've had enough of being the world's fool cause she knocks me out she fills up my heart she's my everything my It's all coming back to me now. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Beautiful. I can't believe I remember them. All of it. Yeah. So, you have some uh, some performances coming up. Where, I do. Where, where you get to do more than just a couple songs. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm gonna you're going to be today. at the coffee gallery. That's right. I understand about a week or two before I am. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I'm, I'm playing there on the uh, 29th. June, uh -huh. uh, yeah, June 29th. I'll um, be there the 10th. With, uh, with Severn Brown and Marty Axelrod. Oh, there's a good show. And show. they call themselves the Severly Brothers. That'll That's so really amazing. Fun. Oh, my God. But, so you're going to be there on the 10th? Yeah, with Art Padell and uh, Dolan Ellis. Both of them were in the new Christy Minstrels. Uh, like the original group and I was in the new Christy Minstrels for two months so we thought you know that's like our good <laughs> that's a, the unifying thing it's called uh, two got two old guys and a blonde <laughs> awesome you would you gonna... um, put a link to the ticket for that show on yeah when, when we finish if I know how to do it and I remember just in the comments you'll, you'll see comments. those comments underneath you can just type I'll, in I'll do okay. it I'll do it for you okay so June 10th at the coffee gallery yeah I'll yeah. find it I'll I think we're, it it's there. like it's six or seven o'clock that kind of thing might even yeah. get five I don't know we can we can find the event I and can't put remember. a link to it that's that's no problem and uh, are you guys going to do something together, do you think? Or? I honestly don't think so. Uh, Art and I might, because we've played together before. But I haven't seen, I mean, I've seen Dolan, because I went. I played Arizona a couple of years <coughs> back, and he actually came to a couple of those shows. But I hadn't seen Dolan in, you know, since the 60s. So, yeah. Dolan was, was a star of the Christy Minstrel show. Mm -hmm. So was Art, actually. They both were. Such cute, cute guys. So... <laughs> So we've 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 talked more about writing really than we have about performing, but you've done a lot of both. You've you've done a, a fair amount of acting and uh, and with the Groundlings, yeah. and and a lot of musical performing. Um, if you had to, I love asking people this. If if, <laughs> if you had to, I think I know the answer, but I'm going to ask you anyway. If you had to choose one or the other, writing or performing. Oh geez, uh, well, I'd perform, but I have to say because I enjoy being on stage. But I also like the solitary life. Uh -huh. I really like being alone. I like getting up in the morning and not having to be anywhere and not having to wear makeup. <laughs> like this? Not, yeah. Like, <laughs> well, to me, this is this is like having to be out in the world. I don't yeah. not enjoy it. I enjoy it. I always enjoy things once I'm there. Right. But the idea, when you go to bed at night and you know you don't have to be anywhere the next yeah. day, there's nothing like it. It's, it's a great joy to me. And uh, although as I get more and more time, as I get older and more and more time alone, maybe I like it less less and less <laughs> you know it's, a, it's yeah. an interesting thing that happens like you 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 try so hard to get that time alone writing time but then when you have it it's like why did i really want this this is too much pressure you know well writing that's not the really answer hard. i expected I, you know, I, I thought you were going to say writing so that's oh yeah well well you know i would rather right. have the solitary time yeah. but i but you know as i said being on stage there's a certain thing about being on stage there's a, a liveness that uh, happens to me that I feel I can feel it and I like it. You, know? you get you get like from the audience. I don't you, know. Maybe it is from the, maybe that's what it is. There's I know so one of one of one of the one of my favorite moments in performing. One of one of my favorite things that happens, and it doesn't happen all that often, but but every once in a while because it's it's so many 
so many plate, plate elements have to be exactly in the right place at the right moment. But once in a while I'll be playing and I'll, it, it could be anything. It could be a physical gesture or a facial expression, or it could be the way I, the way I deliver a particular phrase or a word uh, or, or just the lyric itself. But, but there's something, some moment in the song or in whatever I'm doing that, that touches somebody in the audience and they react to it. You can feel visit, it happen. Visit, oh, you can see it. Yeah. You can, you can, if I happen to be looking at them at that moment and they go, oh, wow, you know, something mm -hmm. like that, that is, that's the whole ball of wax for me because then that, in that moment, I know that I connected with that person. I think that happens to you a lot and, more, by the way, than it does, than it does to a lot of performers because, well, because you're, you're so passionate up there. You're not, oh. it's like you practice, you know, you get your shit ready. No, it's okay. <laughs> Get your shit ready, and uh, and but then you go out there and you don't care how it sounds and you don't care how it looks and I love that. I'm not saying wow. it looks bad or sounds bad. I'm just saying yeah. that it's so obvious that all you're doing is getting it out there, and uh, a lot of us admire that because expressing, displaying passion, and sort of like uh, throwing caution to the wind and having. A sense of abandonment, maybe that's what it is. Mm. Um, you know, a lot of us are more careful than wow. that. We're, we're having to be careful, and I, I just, I admire it. I wish it's very rare that I'm on stage where I get to really feel like I'm just really putting it all out there and don't care how. I mean, maybe it's because partly being a woman, uh -huh. you know, we care in a different way how we look. Because yeah. I have to say, more men do what you're. Oh, I shouldn't say that. I could probably name a million people that do that. <laughs> but, you know, I find that it's very rare that I'm on stage that I'm not aware that I'm on stage and that I'm, yeah. you know, I don't know. Well, that's, that's, a, that's both very revealing and, and a beautiful compliment. So thank well, you. It's I, the truth. I, uh, I appreciate that. Um, Are you going to sing the other song? What is the other song? Oh, I just see you. John, yeah. The one that he loves. Yeah. Do you want me to do that? If you feel like it. I don't mind doing it. Hey, I'm just a tool. <laughs> oh, this was a prompt. This was written on a prompt, by the way. I'm Marty Axelrod oh. and I, and a couple of wow. other people were in a this writing group, and this guy, Marty Martin, used to give prompts. Mm -hmm. And this one was, what do you see when you look in the mirror? Wow. That's what I wrote. driveway with the bucket and a sponge He's finally gonna wash her Cherokee He takes his shirt off as he passes the window on the driver's side and sees 
a belly where a six pack used to be. He laughs, but she knows how it upsets him. She comes out and steps between him and his reflection. Thanks, Tracy. Thank you. Um, is there anything? Is there anything I should have touched on with you this morning that I did not? Well, my anything? illustrious television career, but you know what? Is like as the years go by, I care less and. <laughs> well, we did. We did. I think you mentioned it. it but, yes, but, we did mention it. Um, we did, did mention it. Of course, we mentioned shoot. it. Um, and the only thing I didn't mention about your, your television career, the, the you know, the, probably the biggest highlight. Was that you? Uh, you were a writer on the on the famous uh, Ellen episode where she yeah, came out, I, um, and you got an Emmy for that. If yeah, I my partner and I and three other people, Ellen included, won. Yeah, uh, won the Emmy for writing the coming out episode. It was it was one of the highlights of my life. I mean, there was my daughter's birth, my grandson's birth, my wedding, and winning an Emmy. <laughs> I'm probably I'm not. I'm and leaving Sunday something morning out. live with John M. And <laughs> Sunday morning with John M. No, oh, that was well, pretty cool. Well, thank you so much. I it seems to me I think I remember seeing that you have one or two other gigs coming up besides Coffee Gallery. Uh, um, I might, but I can't remember. I have one next year. I've already been booked for next year for something in September. Congrats. <laughs> I'm going to play Cody Knuckles. Knuckles. Is that yes. A friend. Yeah, the A-frame uh, on in September of 2019. So uh, I have, I have to a booking live for that next long. year too. I'm doing First Friday with Severn Brown in next year. Next that's year, so yeah. Funny. Well, these these are shows that get booked really fast. That's that's <laughs> yeah. what, that's what happens. And you know, I told him I said it's going to take me a year to get ready to play. Yeah, right. To do two sets of what 50 minutes. Right. It's something right. like that. So uh, the, I can't think of anything else. I know I I probably do have something, but. Um, if you have, remember it, you can post it. Yeah. Also, I, I, you know, I told you I do children's CDs, right, and I've started right. a company called Run Along Home, and we're sort of rolling it out June fifteenth with my second kid CD, and that's kind of, it's going to be a big thing, but nobody's going to hear about it. You know, that's <laughs> the way that is. I mean, nobody in my folk community, uh -huh. maybe probably because it's going to be like this other community. It's like, don't you see how everything gets so separate? Now yeah. that with the yeah. internet, it's like you can be doing something. I could come here and say, find out, well, oh, John M. is a member, you know, he's going to the moon. He's, he's an astronaut. Well, <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't know that. Why, right. why would I know that? You right, know? right. Uh, somebody asked if you have a website. TracyNewman.com. And Tracy is, is like Dick Tracy, T-R-A-C-Y. And Newman is like Paul Newman. TracyNewman.com. Awesome. Yeah. And there's a there's a wonderful video for I just see you on yeah, YouTube. I'm I posted very proud a link that, to it yeah. on on as part of the promo for this thing this morning. That's great. That so was, that was like and, and a lot of a lot of mutual friends in that video. I know. I mean, just getting the people to be in that was so fun. Yes, yeah, so it, it was a great video. I saw it too. I actually asked Lily Tomlin to be in it too, and she said yes. 
And then wow. her partner couldn't, the, the uh, woman we were shooting her partner couldn't do it. So wow. I, that would have been so, cool too. But if we got we got some amazing people in there. One, really cool. one last question I did want to ask you. We're running a bit long, but but um, you you mentioned, of course, your, your famous sister, Lorraine. Yeah. And, and um, is that, um, in terms of your career, you know, you both being kind of in, in either the same or related businesses, have you found that that, um, that being her sister has been a blessing, a curse, a little of both? Uh, um, you know, first uh, of all, you have to know I take total credit for Lorraine's career. I'm totally <laughs> responsible for it. Awesome. And besides, you know, so then anything that happens with her, I'm so proud of. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But really, uh, it, it has been both. It has it has been both, you know. Um, since I'm not somebody that does characters, mm -hmm. uh, and I've never been able to. I mean, I've always, like, even when she was four years old, she was doing characters. So I was always impressed with that. She always had an audience in me. So in that respect, I, I have had a lot to do with uh, Lorraine's success in, in that she was supported so young, not just by me, mm -hmm. but by her whole family. Um, and I did drag her to the Groundlings, where she was uh, discovered by Lorne Michaels and Lily Tomlin. Thank you for doing that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, other than that, you know, you've got to have the goods when they come around. And Lorraine's just one of the funniest people I've ever known, you know, and I've known her all, my, all her life. She's younger than me. Uh, but as far as the only way I'd say that it, it it's never been a curse but the only w frustrating thing was as a songwriter because I was writing songs when she was discovered mm -hmm. I was really more of a playing guitar and singing mm -hmm. is when she got on Saturday Night Live and I saw that Bonnie Raitt and people like, and Linda Ronstadt people like that were going to be on it I would send I would send Lorraine songs say give this to Bonnie Raitt and she would write back and say I I I don't know them. <laughs> yeah. You know, I can I didn't understand until I started writing and producing television what it's like when a celebrity is on your show that you it's not like you know them. Oh, somebody's calling me. It's probably uh it's probably Bonnie Raitt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Must be. <laughs> Should I turn that off? That's all right. Uh, all right. Don't worry about it. It's probably my daughter uh doing the FaceTime with uh, it might be in the same key. <laughs> so that's the answer so, to that. Okay. Well, listen. What are you going to say? Thank, well, before I get to that, I want to I would just thank you for coming in here, you know, early on a Sunday morning on a holiday weekend. Oh, did you? After after being up late last night as we both were to and yeah, we were. you know, doing this, it's been a lot of fun. Oh, it's been great. And I know from what Hillary said and I can just tell that there's you've got a lot of fans out there. And, oh, oh, thank yeah. you. And, and you know, know Hillary should you know. turn it around and get yourself on there. Oh, not right now. Oh, that's <laughs> right. Not right now. <laughs> we won't talk about that. Okay, you know, don't we, talk about we, that. we uh, I've only you are one of only three female guests that, I've, that we've had on this show oh, really? in over a year and a half. And the second one was, was Lisa Turner, mm -hmm. who was like a few weeks ago. And the first one was hey. Hillary. Hillary. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, you should have, like, okay. Abby Posner. Do you know Abby? Yeah. She's yeah, so you're right. Great. We should have her. Abby's great. I mean, um, I, it's terrible. I can't even think of them right now, but I know so many. Yeah. No, well, well, we're planning on having more. Yeah. Pam Lowe is going to be here yeah. in June with Chad Watson. And uh, we got a we got a bunch of cool people uh, coming up. So um, to answer your question, I'm gonna. When we were off camera earlier, Lorraine uh, gave me yet another. Uh, not Lorraine. Uh, God, I Hillary? am so sorry. Tracy. Oh, Tracy. You. God. Yeah, well, that's, that's like terrible. We were just talking about Lorraine, and I brain for it. I am so sorry. That's all right. I I know which Newman I have here with me this morning, uh, and it's by choice. But uh, anyway. Uh, Tracy gave me yet another very nice compliment. Um, she said, "She said, uh, the, you know, the only songs I've heard you do have been sort of anthem-like songs." And uh, I'm going to close this out with one of those. Um, it's another one I haven't played here in a while, but uh, it's Memorial Day. I understand it's it is. it's it is Memorial Day, and uh, yeah. so it's appropriate. And uh, I understand this is one of John Zipper's favorite songs. So, John, if you're still watching, enjoy. And feel free to sing along okay. on the choruses on this with me. We stand for freedom of speech. We stand for freedom of choice. One 
united nation, not always one unified voice. We are strong in the face of danger, compassionate to those in need. We are brothers and sisters of every race, color and It's, it's, I, it's, I have a couple of those. You know, you would think I wrote them last night. And, uh, well, they're I, always, I they always but... apply, but they just happen to have one. Happens to <coughs> I love that you you started coughing and stopped. I once oh, saw I'm glad you like that. Yeah, I wasn't so crazy about it. But. I saw a guy in Kulak actually sneeze in the middle of a song. Now, think about that. Have you ever sneezed in the middle have, of a song? Yes. Oh, I never have. I, I, I've never even seen it. I had never <laughs> seen it until that. Wow. Well... <laughs> Thank you again, and thanks to all of you for, for joining us this morning. Happy Memorial Day weekend to you. Um, enjoy the rest of it. Please, um, if you drink, please don't drive. And if you do drive, drive carefully. Um, or call and, a lift. And, yeah, or call uh, me or up. Or call a lift. Drink, yeah, yeah, call me yeah, up. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, so thanks for joining us. Thanks for being with us. Um, uh, I'm not sure yet. I'm. I am. We have a tentatively booked guest for next week, but I don't want to announce it yet because it's not confirmed. But I, I think we have someone next week, and we have the whole rest of next month. We have some very cool people coming. Um, Eric Chase is going to be here. A bunch of cool folks. So uh, keep tuning in. Keep joining us. Thank you for liking. Thank you for sharing. Most especially, thanks for telling your friends about us and posting links and stuff like that. Uh, we're we're always glad to have you here. And, um, you know, thanks for saying hi to us and, and messages after the fact, messages, requests, questions, anything like that are always welcome. Until next Sunday, Hillary, any, uh, any, this is, this is your moment, Hillary. Yes. <laughs> Thank you everybody for joining us and have a great week. See you next time.